Hey, this is Stu Hodges. I'm the lead pastor of Waters Edge Church, and this is our podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope this message changes the way you think about church. Here's today's message. Well, how are we doing, everybody? Welcome to church today. Oh, we're thrilled, thrilled that you're here in Yorktown and Newport News. Of course, a big shout out to our extended family joining us today from all over the world and to the men at Indian Creek. We love you so much. We believe in you. And we are thrilled, thrilled today that you are here as we continue this series that's really all about parenting. But hey, trust me, even if you aren't a parent, uh, there is something in this series for you. And I'll tell you why. Because every time we open God's Word, every time, every time we open the Bible, if we have hearts ready to receive it, God will use His Word to speak to whatever situation you find yourself in. And I think that's going to be true for all of us today, but especially those of us who are parents. And uh, we, we titled this series, Fam Now Streaming, because the reality is that a lot of us, m- most of us probably who are parents, take our parenting cues, we get our parenting strategies, we receive our parenting advice, most often from whatever is streaming right now on our devices. Like that's how a lot of us a lot of us get our parenting information, whether it's Netflix or Hulu or TikTok or Instagram. Can we just all agree that TikTok should not be the expert parent resource? Can we just, can we just agree? That's not where we should be looking. And uh, in, in, instead, we know this, we know this, we, sh- we should be looking to, to Scripture. But so often, so often, like if right now, if you were to follow famous parenting influencers on TikTok or Instagram... Here's the trend they would be pushing, all right? And I, and I didn't know this until recently. I started doing some research for this series. There's, there's currently a parenting trend, and, 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 and culture pushes it pretty hard. And I, and, and I don't know that much about it, but it's, um, it's a parenting tr- trend called uh, gentle parenting. Do you know about this one? Gentle parenting. Now, 20 you know, plus years ago, when we started raising our kids, Tabitha and I, you know, we, we didn't have the benefit of having social media to teach us these tried and true proven principles of parenting. We didn't have this back then, um, so we didn't know. And my parents, honestly, um, they didn't read that book growing up. So gentle parenting was never, like my behind wishes they'd read the book, but um, (laughs) that was not the prevailing philosophy of the day for parenting, gentle parenting. I did read this though about gentle parenting. Again, I don't know that much about it, but I, I, I read this that, that if you're a a gentle parent, if you're a gentle parent and you really embrace this gentle parenting trend, you, you, you actually must choose baby names for your child that sound gentle. Did you know this? There are names now that sound gentle. You have to use names that have soft consonants like a lot of L's and M's and are very vowel heavy. Names, names like Lila, Milo. Finn, Rowan. This feels gentle, doesn't it? I looked on the list. I could not find Stuart anywhere on the list. I'm just saying, it wasn't on the list. It's not a gentle name, apparently. And I don't know, if you're a gentle parent, that's awesome. High five. I don't know much about it. I, I I just know this. There's a better place, a better place for Christian parents to get our parenting cues from what we stream on our devices. There's a better place than that, and the place is God's Word. That's where we get our parenting cues, parents. We turn to the Bible, and, um, and so what I want to do today is I want to help you. I want to help you turn to the Bible, because the Bible has so much to say, so much to say about family and about parenting, and, um, and I want to give you today a scripture for every stage. That's what I've titled today's message. It is a scripture for every stage because there are actually stages to parenting. And I don't don't know if you know that or not. There there are stages to parent. I'm gonna teach you four of them today, four stages to parenting. And then my goal is to give you a scripture for every stage so so that you aren't just relying on culture to give you your cues, but so that you can turn to the Bible to give you your parenting cues, a scripture for every stage. What are the four stages of parenting? Well, you can read more about these from a great book, um, a great book by Andy Stanley called Parenting. Um, 
uh, getting it right, but here are the four stages, all right? Uh, if, you, if you've got a child zero to five years old, that is the, the discipline stage. Five to 12 years old is the training stage. 12 to 18 years old is the coaching stage. And 18 years plus is the friendship stage. These are the stages of parenting. And honestly, parents, your strategies for how you parent should adjust for every stage of parenting. You, you, you understand that, right? Every stage of parenting means that, that you adjust your parenting style, you, your approach to parenting. And I think the Bible actually gives us precepts and principles that help us understand how we might parent through each stage. So I want to give you a scripture for every stage, for every stage. Let, let's, let's get after it today. Let's start with the discipline stage of parenting, the discipline stage of parenting. How many of you are parents right now with a child zero to five years old? Would you just raise your hand in the chat? Let us know, because this is who we need to pray for. All right, right here, zero to five, zero to five. I'm looking at you. I can tell you look tired and grumpy, and, uh, and, I, and I understand why, because this is a difficult stage of parenting. It, it, is, um, it is a challenging stage of parenting. It is an exhausting stage of parenting. And a lot of parents, a lot of parents just think that, hey, um, in this stage of parenting, my job is to keep them alive. And uh, that is an important part, by the way, an important part of this stage of parenting. You want to keep them alive, all right? But in addition to keeping them alive and, and nurturing them and cuddling them and swaddling them and celebrating all the firsts with them. There's so many first, you know, first steps and first words and first birthday and first solid food and first time on the big boy potty. I mean, there's so many, so many exciting things to celebrate. There's actually a very important thing that a lot of parents in this stage skip or miss or overlook or delay for a later stage. And, and that um, is is this little thing called discipline, discipline. Parents of young children, your kids need to be taught about boundaries, about rules, about consequences. And the best time for them to learn is during this stage of parenting, zero to five years old. In fact, if you'll discipline your children during this stage of parenting, um, it will help their progression as they get to the later stages of parenting. A Christ-centered approach to parenting, if, if you're going to take your cues from the Bible, not from culture, you're going you're to spend a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of effort during the zero to five-year-old stage um, disciplining your kids. Let me give you a scripture for this, and there are a lot of them, but I want to give you a scripture for every stage. A lot of scriptures in the Bible actually talk about discipline, highlighting the value and importance of discipline. I'll just give you, I'll just give you one. The Bible says this. It says, discipline your son, for in that there is hope. By the way, for those of you who are um, uh, a parent, parents of daughters, uh, th this is... This is a principle that applies to all of our children. All right, can I just tell you that? Like, this isn't like a, a, a daughter should not be disciplined. As, as, a, as a girl dad, I know it can be real hard to discipline a daughter, but they, they need it as much as your sons. Discipline your son, for in that there's hope. Woo, there's hope. Holler at your boy. Somebody, you need to know that today. There's hope. And then it says this, do not be a willing party to his death. That's strong. That's strong. Discipline leads to hope. The scripture says the lack of discipline leads to death. Now, I know you're thinking, well, that's pretty dramatic. I know, I know, I know it's pretty dramatic. I think the Bible's using a little drama here to get your attention to help you understand the importance of discipline in this stage of parenting. In fact, if you take your cue from this command, not from culture, but if you take your cue from this command, you'll discover that discipline isn't something you do to your child. It's actually something you do for your child. That you're correcting bad behavior, wrongful behavior, even, let me say it like this, sinful behavior in love for the good of your child. And you're rewarding good behavior, godly behavior, obedient behavior in love for the good 
of your child. In fact, the Bible in the book of Hebrews talks about how that a loving father disciplines his child. A loving father that without discipline, there's a lack of, of love. And there are a lot of parents today, a lot of parents. And you're taking your cue from culture and you're allowing your kids to run your life. And that's what kids will do, by the way, if you let them. If you let them, they will step right up into your family and act like they are the CEO. They will do it. And they will immediately make your whole family's world start to revolve around them. They will demand crazy things. Crazy stuff. Amazingly ridiculous stuff. Like that they will get their way in the grocery store. They will demand it. They will demand that you will wake up in the middle of the night, lose sleep over them. What are these children thinking? They will demand that you will cower to their wants and to their wishes. And I'm just telling you, this is the stage parents to discipline your children so they understand they are not the center of the universe. They are not the CEO of your family. A cue from scripture would say discipline during this stage. In fact, I know what you're all thinking. Yeah, but Pastor Stu, my kid's so cute. So cute. I mean, even when they throw a fit, they're cute. Even when they throw a tantrum, they're cute. Even when they cry and demand their way, they're cute. I understand you got cute kids. In fact, I've seen some of your children. They are beautiful babies. That you, some of y'all, some of y'all could make money off a baby gap right now. Just enroll them in the modeling program. You got cute kids, but some of those cute kids got bad behaviors. In fact. I think it's important that parents understand that, that our kids are actually born with sinful behavior. And God has positioned you as their parent to correct that behavior through a process called discipline. Parents who don't discipline their children don't instill in their children the values and the importance of Obedience, the understanding of right and wrong behavior and consequences. Uh, kids who tell their parents no without correction, they, they never learn the value and importance of authority. Kid, kids who throw fits without correction never learn self-control. Kids who are dishonest without correction never learn integrity. Kids who are disrespectful without correction actually never learn about identity. Discipline is an important part of every child's developmental process. And here, here's what I'm really realizing. A lot, of, a lot of parents with young kids don't discipline because they just don't know how. So I'm going to help you with just a couple practical tips, and then, and then we're going to move on to the next stage of parenting. Just a couple practical tips around our house. One of the things in this stage of parenting that was really important, and we talked about it a lot, was this thing we called first-time obedience. First-time obedience, which just means the first time mom or dad say something, tell you to do something, ask something of you, we expect you in that moment to obey the first time, not the second time, not the one, two, three, I'm counting time. Hello. But to obey the first time, and if not, there are consequences. There's discipline. So if you're a parent right now who finds yourself nagging, repeating, threatening, bribing, counting, counting some more, giving another chance, one more final chance, trust me when I tell you, you're not doing yourself or your kids any favors. First time obedience. And I know, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but my kid is so smart and so intellectual. Listen, your three-year-old does not have the capacity to reason with. Do you understand that? They can't be reasoned with. And, and, your, and your four-year-old is not a peer to negotiate with. If your kids do not obey you the first time you speak, the first time you ask, the first time you tell them to do something, there needs to be a form of discipline. You're welcome. Here, here's another tip. 
never discipline in anger. And the reason is because in the heat of the moment, we typically discipline incorrectly. So we get hot-headed and we say things we shouldn't say and we use a tone we shouldn't use and we, and we, um, and we threaten things we never have any intention of following through on. Huh? And, 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 um, and we don't actually discipline the way God would intend for us to discipline. God, God wants us to, to discipline in a way that is loving and caring and nurturing, that is for our children. And so we're to discipline in love, not in anger. And in those moments where you do feel yourself getting angry, give a time out, but the time out should be for yourself. <laughs> Never discipline in anger. Here's, here's, a, here's a third principle that might help you. Discipline promptly with instruction and reconciliation. Kids need to understand that discipline is a consequence, and that's why it needs to be prompt. And a lot of times, especially in this early stages, kids need to connect the dots between the behavior and the consequence. So you'll have to connect the dots for them. That's instruction. But then your job as a parent is to come alongside of them to love them so they can experience immediate forgiveness because discipline teaches consequences and responsibility and punishment. Yes, it does all those things. But did you know that discipline also exists so that you can teach your children about unconditional love and unconditional acceptance? It does that too. I'm I'm giving you cues from the Bible. I understand these are not cues from culture, but if you'll discipline in this stage, it'll make the next stage a whole lot more enjoyable. What is the next stage? I'm talking now about the second stage of parenting, which is the training stage. It's the training stage. Five to 12 years old. How many of you got a child or children in the training stage? Let me see you. The training stage of parenting. That's a bunch of you. And this is an important stage of of parenting because, because this is when you start explaining the why behind the what. This is when you begin to teach the skills and the values that your kids need to succeed in life. You're still disciplining, by the way. Okay? You're still disciplining. But your discipline starts to look a little different as you go through this stage of parenting. Because now you're training. You're training about behaviors and values. Behaviors and values. So in this stage, you might take a little more time to explain the consequence. In this stage, you're not just saying no, because I said so. You're not just saying that in this stage. Now you're helping them know why you said no. You might even in this stage begin to give your child some choices. You might let them start making some decisions on their own and training them about why that is the best choice or maybe not the best choice, the right choice or the wrong choice. But one of, the, one of the problems I see for a lot of parents in this stage of life is that they give too much control. That you give your child too many decisions. And I, I just want you to remember, from 5 to 12 years old, this is still the training stage. Kids at this stage do not have the emotional bandwidth or the intellectual capacity to handle some of the decisions and some of the control that you're putting into their hands. For example, your eight-year-old isn't ready or equipped or mature enough to make decisions about what travel ball team they should play for. That's your decision. Your 10-year-old is not ready to decide what they should or should not be allowed to watch, listen to, play, or what app they should be allowed to download. They aren't equipped for that. And they certainly aren't equipped to handle the weight of unfiltered, unmonitored technology. Training is where you as the parent are still heavily involved and connected. I, th- I think about when my kids were, um, were little and learning to ride bikes. And uh, back in the day, I know they don't do it this way anymore. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's other ways now. But back in the day when my kids were riding bikes, they, they learned with these things called training wheels. You know what I'm talking about? N- now there's just a little bike with no pedals and somehow you you learn to ride it, which is amazing. But back in the day, there were training wheels because they couldn't handle the bike on its own. They had training wheels because they weren't ready 
So the training wheels were used to teach them while they learned. They learned things like the rules of the road. They learned things like balancing the bike. They learned things like how to look both ways before crossing the street. They needed the training wheels in order to learn how to handle the bike. And, and, and that's what I think about when I think of this stage of parenting. And some of you parents with five to 12-year-old kids, you're taking the training wheels off too soon. Let me give you a scripture for this stage. And this is a command for for parents, all of us, but I think it's so strong. Scripture for a stage says this, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train up. That, that's, what, that's what we as parents are called to do. We are called as Christian parents to train up our children. And if you will train up your child with the things of today, it will impact them in their tomorrow. I want, I want to focus on that little word train for just, for just a moment. The first word of that verse, it's, it's from the Hebrew word hanak. Hanak. And it means to initiate, to dedicate, or train. What a, what a, perfect, what a perfect verse for this special day for kid dedication, to initiate, to dedicate, or to train. This is our role, parents. Parents, this is our role, especially in the training stage. We are to initiate, to dedicate, and to train our child. Now, now I want to I hone in on this word because, because hanak, this, this word that means train, it comes from a, a, a root word, which means this, the palate... Uh, uh, up here, this part, the palate of the mouth. And when this verse would have been written in ancient Old Testament days, it, it, was, it was referring to, to uh, the action of, of a Hebrew midwife. When an Israelite woman would, would have a baby, the Hebrew midwife would be there and the Hebrew midwife would take their finger and dip it into a paste and they would take that paste and put it on the hanak, on the palate of the child's mouth, and it would initiate a hunger so that the baby would then in turn nurse. And the Bible uses this word to get across a picture to us parents that maybe you've never known or thought about of what we're to do, because we're to train, we're to initiate in our kids a hunger, a craving for that which is true, for that which is good, for that which is right, for all those things that will cause them later in life to be successful in life, and we're to do it in a way that leaves a good taste in their mouth. It's powerful. Power this is why parents, the tone you use and the words you choose with your kids are so important, especially in this stage. That's why in this stage, this training change stage, it's important to let your kids explore all kinds of different opportunities. Don't become too dominant in just one specific interest because you're training up things in them. You're creating a hunger in them through our training. It's also why in this stage, your kids will learn the most, not by what you say, but by what they see you do. It is so quiet, I don't know if it's just you feel convicted right now, if you're scared what I'm about to say next, if you think I'm gonna bring your bad children on stage from kid craze and ask whose kid is this? <laughs> Kids learn the most by what they see you do. At this stage of parenting, every word you use Every action you model, it is downloaded to your kids as something to be mimicked. That's God's design. Why? Because God created you as their parent to initiate in them a hunger for the things they will later need in life to be godly. So they're learning from you. And God's intention is that you would model godly behavior, initiating in them a hunger to be godly. There's so many things the Bible talks about in regards to training. I want to give you two. 
of what I believe are the most important two things to train your children in during this stage. This would be a great time to pull out the you know, chore chart and train them how to do some chores. That's important. It'd be a great time to train them how to play sports or pick up a musical instrument. That's phenomenal. It'd be a great time to train them about manners. Maybe train them how to talk on the phone. That'd be a good thing. There's a whole generation don't know how to do that now. But I think there's two primary things to train your children for during this stage. Number one is to train them to choose their friends wisely. If you show me your kids' friends, I will show you your kids' future. That's how important friends are. In fact, I'll never forget when Braden, our oldest, um, when Braden started kindergarten, you know, 20 plus years ago, um, he started kindergarten. I'll never forget. He came home from school first, uh, from, from school on his second day. It was his second day coming home from school. And he announced to Tabitha and I, he announced that he has a new friend at school, a new friend. And he says, but dad, mom, my new friend got in trouble today at school. Now I'm thinking to myself, it's the second day of school. You got to be a pretty bad kid to get in trouble on the second day of school. It's the second day of school. The next day, Braden gets off the bus. He's so excited to tell us, hey, his new friend, which is now his best friend, by the way, he has a best friend now. His new friend became his best friend in just one day, just like that. His new friend who got in trouble on the second day of school is now his best friend. And dad, he got in trouble today too, third day of school. I said, well, Braden, you had to find a new friend. He said, no, dad, no, you don't understand. He's my best friend. I said, what's his name? Braden said, I don't know. I said, get a new friend. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta choose your friends carefully and our kids need to be taught that. And there's a stage of parenting coming where you will have very limited influence in who your, friends, who your kids' friends are. So this is the stage to teach them. This is the stage of parenting to get right relationships around them. This is a stage of parenting to align your family with the right friendships and model it for your kids. Because in this stage of parenting, you get to pick your kids' friends. And you get to model for them how to have good and godly relationships. In fact, I I told you last week that one of my... Goals in the series was that you wouldn't just hear from me about parenting, but you would actually hear from my kids about it as well. And, um, and this week, uh, Braden, Braden actually sent, sent the video for this week, and it, and it had everything to do. And I didn't even, we didn't tell him what to say, except that I'm a great dad. That's all I told him to say. But, <clears throat> um, but the, the video has everything to do with this point of choosing your friends wisely. I want you to hear it from Braden's perspective. Check this out. Hey, Wadjets fam, this is Braden. Um, I am the oldest out of the three Hodges kids, and we all know it. I'm the favorite. I'm married to my amazing wife, Chloe. She is just the best, and I'm so grateful for her. And I'm actually about to start my job at the shipyard, which I am super, super excited to start. And God has really provided for Chloe and I, and I I just get to see it each and every day. Uh, I've had the front row seat of watching my parents parent uh, for a long time now. And I've come away with some, some good truths. And, and one thing they've taught me is the importance of uh, having good friendships. The Bible talks about um, in First Corinthians that bad company corrupts good character. The people who we surround ourselves with, it matters. My parents have taught me that from a very young age. The people who we're with on a day-to-day basis, the, the people who we let influence us, it matters. And I think that's so important, especially in today's world. The people we're surrounding ourselves with, the people that uh, we're in in community with, it matters. If we're in community with people of good character and good morals and and people who are encouraging us to be the best we can, then we're going to succeed. We're going to do well in life, and it's not going to corrupt us like that verse talks about. Uh, It also matters that we have good adults pouring into our lives, and especially for our students. So if your student is not there on Wednesday nights, I encourage you, please get them to student groups. I'm a student group leader and I love, 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 love leading our students. Um, Friendships are so important for our kids these days. And 
my parents have done a really, really got a good job of encouraging uh, us three to have amazing friendships. Well, thanks for all that, guys. And we'll send it back to you, Dad. How cool is that? I love that. So train them about their friends. And then secondly, here's what I need you to train your children in this stage. Train them that God's word is truth. That God's word is truth. So every opportunity you get at this stage of parenting is so important. Listen, every opportunity you get, point your kids back to the truth of the Bible. Because the cue from culture right now is the opposite of that. The cue from culture right now is there is no truth or your feelings are truth. You can be whatever you want to be, whoever you want to be. That's the, that's the cue from culture. But that is not a Christian worldview. And so parents, our job in this stage is to point our kids back to the truth of the word of God. Train them that God's word is truth. That God's word is the authority in our lives. That our values and behaviors as a family come from God's word. That we get direction and guidance from God's word and we live that out in our lives from God's word. In fact, I'll just tell you, I think the best way to do this, this is how Tab and I did it. The, the best way to do it is to have your kids planted in the house of God, to have your family planted in the church. It's how Tab and I did it, is we raised our kids in the church, training them about the importance of God's word. In fact, listen to me, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you treat church as optional, when one generation later, your kids will treat God as optional. Don't be surprised. That's how it works. So I'm, I'm challenging you parents, train them up, in the reality of the truth, that God's word is truth. It is truth. And when you do, it'll make the next stage so much easier. So you're gonna discipline them, you're gonna train them, then they become teenagers and you wanna kill them. <laughs> and this, 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 <laughs> this is the coaching stage. And this is, this is when your role as a parent shifts. It shifts from trainer to coach. It shifts from being on the field, running the bases with them to the sidelines now calling the plays. And we, in the coaching stage, here's what we do. Parents of teenagers, listen. We hold our values tight, but we loosen our control over behaviors. Hold the values tight. Loosen control over behaviors. Don't lower the standard. No, no, no. This is who we are as a family. I would often remind my kids, you're a Hodges, you're a Hodges. You know what that means, you're a Hodges. Hold the standard high, hold the standard high. We don't just allow for any old behaviors, but we slowly release more and more freedom as trust is earned and responsibility is demonstrated. And during this stage of parenting, we give a lot of grace. A lot of grace to ourselves as parents and a lot of grace to teenagers, our kids, because we're all navigating something brand new now, a brand new stage. It's very challenging. And at some point during this stage, these little things called hormones slip in and they just throw it all in a kink. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it all goes out the window. So you give a lot of grace. I want to give you a scripture for every stage. I'm gonna, I actually, I'm going to give you a handful of scriptures for this one because you need them. Hello. <laughs> you need them. I'm going to take you to the most revered prayer in all of Judaism. It's found in the Old Testament. If you were a a practicing Jew, even today in the Jewish tradition, you would have this prayer memorized. You would recite it once in the morning and once at night. Not a bad idea. And as you recited it, you'd cover your eyes to eliminate any possible distractions and to heighten the value of these words. This is a prayer. You should know it, especially if you're a parent of a teenager. It goes like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and walk along the way, when you lie down and when you get up, and tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The emphasis here is, parents, listen, we want to take God's truths, God's principles, God's commands, God's word, and we want to make it practical to our children in everyday living. We're going, to, we're going to take God's truth, God's commands, God's principles, and we're going to bring it into our everyday life. 
In fact, the focus during these teenage years moves from correction, which you're doing a lot of in the early years, to connection. Now, you're still correcting some. Don't get me wrong. Correction still has to exist. You can't abdicate your responsibilities as a parent. But your correction will only be as effective in this stage of parenting as your connection is. That's why I love this scripture so much. Because it talks so much about the relational connection we have with our kids. We're to talk about God's word. We're to talk about his principles. When we're sitting at home, when we're walking along the road, when we're, when we're sharing a meal together, when we're, when we're in relationship with each other, there's a lot of connection. And yet that doesn't describe the relationship most parents have with their teenagers. In fact, most often what I hear from teenagers is, I, I, our parents of teenagers is, I can't get them to talk to me. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to connect with them anymore. They won't open up. I have no idea what's going on in their lives. And then around seventh or eighth grade, they start to speak a language I don't even understand. They start to say things like skibbity and, and, uh, and, and sigma and riz, and who knows what that means? <laughs> and that's when you have to step into their world. And that's when you have to have an interest in the things that interest them. And that's when you have to create safe spaces for conversation. This is one of the reasons that old school family dinners are so important at this stage of parenting. If, 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 if when you say, hey kids, it's time to eat, everybody runs to the car, that's a problem. Because <laughs> you're missing one of the most pivotal and influential moments for a parent of a teenager. You're to connect with them during this stage of parenting. And not like connect, like we're besties. No, 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 no. That comes at a later stage. But, but to connect in a way that, that the relationship is what validates the rules. Because rules without a relationship at this stage of parenting leads to rebellion. But with a relationship, here's what will happen. Your kids will want to rise to the standard you set. With a relationship with a relationship. And that's why I want to challenge parents to invest in the relationship with their teenagers and then hold the standard high. You, you don't have to parent your teenager like everybody else parents theirs. Oh, if I had a dollar for every time one of my kids said to me in the teenage years, well, their parents don't have that rule. Well, so-and-so's parents, they, don't, they, don't, they aren't as strict as you. If I had a dollar for every one of those things, I'd be a rich man right now. Because I heard it so much. But Tabitha and I just decided we don't want to raise teenagers like everybody else raises them. Because we don't want to have our teenagers turn out like everybody else's teenagers turn out. So we made some difficult decisions. I'm empowering you today to do that too. I'm empowering you, giving you permission to parent your children differently than culture says you should. Because just because every other 12-year-old has TikTok doesn't mean your 12-year-old should. And just because every other student takes their phone to their room at night to scroll mindlessly for hours on end, being exposed over and over and over again to pornographic images doesn't mean your teenager should. And just because everybody else's friends go to the party where there is no parental supervision doesn't mean your kids should. And just because everybody else is going to beach week doesn't mean your teenager should. I'm giving you permission to raise the standard, to connect with your kids, to raise them differently, and watch, they'll turn out differently. You're like, how do I do that? You do that as a skilled coach. As a skilled coach, you build a relationship, you set the standard, you challenge appropriately, you have accountability, you correct when necessary, you celebrate every win and reward along the way, you keep them planted in the house of God, you model godliness, you coach them. And before you know it, guess what'll happen? They will leave the house as a successful young adult and you can kiss your spouse any old time you want to. It's awesome. It's awesome. And that gets us to the final stage. The final stage. I'm just entering it. I don't know if I got a lot to say about it because I don't know that much about it. But it's the final stage called the friendship stage. And this is what every parent prays for. And every parent desires, and parents, you can't rush this stage. You must wait for it patiently, and you cannot force this stage. 
but you can't position yourselves for this stage. And my, my goal today is to encourage parents in this stage, but more than that, my goal today is to encourage younger parents who aren't at this friendship stage. I'm gonna encourage you, like, like hang, hang, hanging out here with a little carrot to dangle in front of you to say, this can be what you have. But you gotta get the stages right to get there. I'm gonna give you your scripture for this stage. You're gonna like this one. The Bible says this, children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring, a reward for him, from him. When you get to this stage, you can finally look back and you can finally say, thank you, Lord, for my children. You will finally get to this stage of your life. It's coming. I know I, you're like, I don't, I don't even see that day coming. You no, know, it's coming. When you will look back over your life and you will say, thank you, Lord. They are a reward. I, I no longer want to return them. They're a gift. I'll receive it. They're friends. And in this stage, you pray a lot and you say a little. Tabitha's teaching me this one. In this stage, you fix your face. <laughs> Before the kids come over, she reminds me, fix your face. You'll know what they're going to say. You'll know what they're up to right now. Fix your face. In this stage, you don't rescue. You don't solve problems that aren't yours. You don't overstep your bounds or overshare your opinion. You engage. And enjoy. You love and you support. And parents, look at me. Look at me. You don't walk away from your faith and you don't walk away from your church in this stage. I don't know what is going on in today's modern day society and culture, but I'm seeing so many parents raise their children in the church and then they leave the church when their kids are out of the house. I'm like, what are you doing? You, you're... <laughs> You are completely, totally, fully erasing everything, negating everything that you just taught your kids were important when you do that. So, so don't walk away from the church. Get more involved in it in this stage. You have more time than you've ever had. Get more involved in it. You have more resources than you've ever had. Give more to it. This is the stage to serve. This is the stage to give. This is the stage where you can pour into the next generation. In fact, there are some younger parents here today who could use the godly counsel, advice, and support for some parents who have graduated now into the friendship stage. They could use you to come alongside, throw a little free babysitting in there for them occasionally. These are the stages of parenting. There's a scripture for every stage. My goal today is to teach you to look to the scriptures, take your cues to be the godly parent God wants you to be. Teach you one more thing and then, and then we gotta be done. <clears throat> Depending on what stage of parenting you're at, here, here's what I know. <laughs> Some days feel very long. Especially the younger stages, some days feel very long. I want to tell you as a parent in a later stage, the days are long. Listen, the years are short. The days are long. The years are short. And that's why I want to end with this scripture. I think, I think it's, I think it's so important for all of us today, no matter what stage you're at. The Bible says this, teach us to number our days. Why? That we may gain a heart of wisdom. And as a parent, I wanna be someone who numbers my days, who recognizes, not, not count every day, no, 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 but make my days count. Because God's using us parents to raise a generation of godly children. He's counting on you. He believes in you to raise his godly kids. Let me pray for all the parents today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? God, today, take this word, drive it deep in our hearts. And for whatever stage of parenting we find ourselves in now, 
We ask that you, through your Holy Spirit, would give us the power, the strength, the wisdom. Help us to have the wisdom to parent through that stage, relying on your word. God, we thank you. We thank you that your word is truth. We aren't alone in this this parenting struggle that, that we have guidance, not from culture, but from scripture. Thank you for our children. I pray a blessing today over every parent. God, I pray today that you would remind them they are uniquely chosen by you and that you've given them an incredible gift. Give them the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to raise kids to be godly. And now with every head bowed and every eye closed, I wanna wanna end with one more moment and that is to give some of you a chance to say yes to Jesus. We've sung about him. We've read his word today. He's spoken to your heart, maybe drawn you to himself. He loves you and he has a plan for you. And if you need a relationship with Jesus Christ today, I invite you to pray this prayer and really mean it now. Say, Jesus, I wanna know you. I want my sin forgiven by you. I want to be made right with God in heaven through you and live my life for you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you today for every person, Father, receiving Jesus. For all of us receiving your word. May it change us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, can you thank God today for his word, everybody? Hey, thanks for joining us. If you found today's message helpful, why don't you rate and review it and maybe even share it with your friends. And I want to encourage you to consider partnering with us through your financial support to change the way more people think about church. Just text Water's Edge to the number 77977. Thanks for listening.